I was in graduate school at the uh, University of Chicago after graduating from Miami and Ohio in 1942 and went to the University of Chicago to get a graduate degree even though the war was on. My draft board recommended I do that rather than go into the service. And that was where the Manhattan Project was centered. And I had been in graduate school about two or three weeks when I received an invitation to come to the physics building for an interview about a potential job, which I was not interested in having. And at the end of the day, I found out that it was on about nuclear energy and that uh, it was called the Manhattan Project. And I joined the Manhattan Project in Chicago at that time in summer of 42. They just said that they were working on uh, a new source of energy which was not clear whether it would be used to power tanks and fly airplanes or for bombs. We had gone to war when bombed by the Japanese in 1941. And uh, so this was the summer of 42 and the war in the Pacific was raging fairly heavily at that point and obviously we were becoming engaged in the European war as well. Initially I worked on the uh, effects of radiation on materials, particularly materials of construction. It would be used for an atomic pile to determine how they were affected by radiation. And we used the cyclotron at the University of Chicago and the Van de Graaff generator at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend. One of the requirements working on the Manhattan Project, everyone had to wear what was called a film badge. You put that on when you went to work in the morning and you handed it in at night so they could test how much radiation you had received during the day doing your various experiments and the limit as I remember was one-tenth of a Rentgen per day. Uh, above that was considered dangerous and everyone working on the project was monitored very closely. I had to take a two weeks vacation at one point at the University of Chicago because I'd been exposed to radiation and the cyclotron inadvertently they didn't have the warning signs up that this cyclotron was on and I had attached my specimens to the opening on the cyclotron and it turned out later that I'd been radiated considerably. We didn't know when the first test was going to be done in 1945, but there was uh, an undercurrent in the facilities at Oak Ridge. Everybody knew something was going on, but nobody really knew what. And it was not until uh, a week or so later that we heard that the first bomb had been tested and had worked. The first example of its being used was Hiroshima or Hiroshima, and followed not very long afterwards by the one at Nagasaki. And I think everybody on the Manhattan Project at that time felt fairly enthused because they knew that that was probably going to bring the, the end to the war, which was the objective in the first place. That was an appalling thing to know how many people had been killed and many had not. They'd been radiated and we knew that it was going to be very hard on them. The opposite side of that, many of us had friends who were serving in the armed forces at the time in the Pacific and we knew that some of them were scheduled to go into Japan if there were an attack and that meant that would not have to happen so it was a very mixed feeling obviously uh, enthused because the war was coming to an end sad because it meant the death of a tremendous number of people innocent people it was a very strong sentiment among many of the people who worked on the Manhattan Project after the war was over, uh, not wanting our government to continue in that vein, but to convert 
all the energy toward useful energy for civilians and not for war purposes. Good science is needed for government programs. Poor science would serve the country very poorly. The question is then what is the use of that science? And that's where any debate should take place as to what the United States should be doing in its relationship to other people around the world. Uh, to do it with a humane point of view or a military point of view. And I think many scientists, probably a majority, I've never tried to canvass them, would say it should be with a humane or civilian point of view, not a military point of view. Now I went back to graduate school. I decided if I were going to be a scientist, I really ought to go back to school and get a PhD. I had a bachelor's degree in chemistry and mathematics. But if I were going to continue in science, I really ought to get an advanced degree. And I'd had as much radiation as I thought I needed after five years. There were a lot of other things in chemistry that were fascinating and interesting. And I really didn't feel I wanted to work in that environment or it was strictly a government controlled laboratory. I wanted to be independent. Well, there were a group of us here in Wilmington, uh, some scientists at uh, DuPont, some other members of the commercial community in Wilmington who formed a chapter of business executives for nuclear arms control back in the late since 1970s. We used to hold about uh, four meetings a year here in Wilmington and invite senior officials from Washington, uh, scientists, human rights people to come in and talk to people in the community. In Philadelphia, we held usually one big banquet a year. Uh, one year was Tom and Jerry, the ice cream people, came and gave a talk and pledged one and a half percent of their profits off the top to go toward nuclear arms control projects around the country. I think it was inevitable that other countries would want to have nuclear weapons uh, because it's a sign of strength if you have it and you know that you're probably not going to be attacked. Uh, we have too many. Russia has too many. We have both reduced considerably the number we have, but when you consider that we can kill everyone in the world many, many times over with what we now have, it doesn't make much sense to continue to stockpile the supplies that we both have. I would vote to ratify the treaty. I think it should be ratified. I think we should ban testing all over the world. The world is less safe with nuclear weapons. And if we could eliminate them, that would be just great. Informing the public is not an easy thing to do. It takes continuous effort, not just now and then, uh, once, three times, five times a year. It takes a regular continuing campaign, basically. It takes a group of people who are dedicated to doing this and see that as their life's work.